Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest, House Robber 4. The problem states that you are given a consecutive street of houses and each of these houses has some money inside them. Now there is a robber. The robber will rob money from the houses, but he will not rob money from adjacent houses, right? Now, the capability of the robber is defined as the maximum money he can steal from one of the houses of all the houses he robbed. For example, let's say robber robbed 1, 5 and 7. House number 1, 5 and 7. Now, the capability of the robber is defined as the maximum amount of money he has robbed from a single house. So, the capability would be the maximum of amount of money first house had, amount of money fifth house had and amount of money seventh house had. So maximum of all those would be the capability of the robber. Now you are given or you can you are given the amount of money each house had in the array nums. And you are also given an integer k which says that robber has to steal from at least k houses, right? So robber can steal from more house but it has to steal from at least k house. Now we need to return the minimum capability of the robber. Now let's take an example. Let's say these are the four houses and e these are the money that each of these houses had. And k is two. It means the robber has to rob at least two house. Now how many? There are three possible ways to rob two houses. Either robber can rob uh, zero index and second index, right? Or robber can rob. So notice that if if robber robbed zero, it can't rob the second one, uh, the first index, because robber will refuse to steal from adjacent house, right? So if robber rob from first, only choice robber had is either steal second or third, right? So these are the two choices. And if robber robbed from first, the only choice robber has is to rob from third. So there are three choices: zero, two, zero, three, and one, three. Now, if robber robbed from 0 and 2, what is the capability? Capability would be the maximum money that either 0 or that 0 or 2 had. So 0 has 2 unit of money, 2 has 5 unit of money. So maximum of 2 and 5 would be the capability of the rob robber. So maximum of 2 and 5 is 5. So hence capability of the robber is 5. Similarly, for 0 and 3 capability is 9 and for 1 and 3 capability is 9. We need to return the minimum capability. So minimum capability of all these three is five and hence five is the answer. So hope the problem statement is clear. Now how to solve this? So let's focus on what have been asked. So we are asked to return the minimum capability of the robber. Now what can be the minimum capability? Minimum capability can be one. That is the best minimum capability because none of the houses had more than one dollar uh, has less than one dollar. So minimum capability can be one. Now we will check whether one is possible or not, whether capability of one is possible or not. If it is possible, then one is the answer. Otherwise we will try two, right? If it is possible, two is the answer. Otherwise we will try three, right? And so on and so forth. So the first one, first capability that satisfies all the constraint will be the capability of the robber and that will be our answer. Right now, let's say we are trying with one. Uh, we are saying that okay, is one possible or not? So now, how to solve this? Or in other words, we have to solve whether x is possible or not for a given x. Whether capability of x is possible or not. So what does that mean? It means that we have to satis like we have to satisfy all these three constraints with x. So constraints are first one uh, that is given like robber should rob at least k house right and second one is robber can't rob adjacent house so these two constraints are given and the third one is something we found from this uh, x that we have chosen so what we are saying is x is the capability of the robber so what does that mean it means that robber should not rob any house which have greater than x unit of money because if robber let's say rob any house with x plus y number of money y number of dollars then if you take maximum of x plus y and x the maximum would be x plus y right and hence capability would not be x instead capability would be x plus y 
So we want capability to be X. So what does that mean? It means that robber should rob only the house which have less than X unit of money, right? So if for any X this is satisfied, then we will return true. Otherwise, we will return false. That's what we need to implement. Now, how to do that? So let's take this. Uh, let's try to dry run with this example. So let's focus from the last statement because that is the easiest one. So that says that robber can rob only the houses with money less than X. So let's say X is one for now, right? So if X is one, it means that robber can't rob any of these house, right? Because it can't rob any house which have greater than one unit of money. Uh, less than, yeah, right? So now given the remaining houses, we need to satisfy all the two conditions. So second condition is something we'll take care of while selecting the houses. The first condition is important. It says we need to select at least K house. So how many maximum houses that we can select from here? So let's say we select first one, right? So once we select first one, we can't select this one, right? And now we will select this one. So we are able to select two houses, right? But number of houses that we have to select is three and two is less than three. So basically we are not able to satisfy all the constraint here. And hence one, the one is not possible. Capability of one is not possible. So now we will try with two and then three and so on, right? So what exactly we have done? Firstly, we remove all the houses which have greater than X capability, right? And secondly, we just start from the beginning and try to select houses one by one in the best possible manner. So basically we have to select K houses. So instead of selecting K houses, what we are saying is we will try to select as many houses as possible and then we will check whether we are able to satisfy this K or not, right? So with the given, with the remaining set of houses, how many maximum houses that you can select? That is the problem now. With the remaining set of houses, how many maximum houses that you can select? So with one, let's say you select one. So can you ever in any scenario, can you, will you ever want to skip one or the first house that you can select? Answer is no, because let's say you skip first one and you say that, okay, I will select this one. So if you are selecting this one, in a way you are, you are making things worse. So what you are saying, you have already skipped one house, first of all. And secondly, with, by choosing an index, which is greater, you are making sure that you will not be able to select something which is after that. So basically currently this is seven, but let's say this was not seven and instead that, that is one. So because you have selected this, you are making things worse for you by saying that you will not be able to select this particular one, right? So it always makes sense to select the first house that is possible. So we will try this house. Now, as soon as we select this house, this house is something which is not possible, right? Now we will check the next one and basically see, okay, this we, we took this house and because of this house, let's say there was, there were another house here. So that house would not be possible. Let's say this is also one. This five is not there. Instead, this is let's say this is one. So because we select this one, this one is not possible, right? So we will keep on doing this and see how many maximum houses that we can select. And if that maximum house is less than or equals to K, then that is the answer. Like basically that particular X is possible and hence X is the answer, right? So how does pseudocode would look like? The pseudocode would look something like this. So basically we are given some maximum amount of money. This is X in our problem we have solved. So what we are doing is we are first of all removing all the indexes which have greater than max money number of uh, dollars. And then we are, we, we are maintaining the last steel index with us. So we are checking whether last steel index is equals to J minus one or not, or basically, uh, sorry, this would be index, right? So, or maybe this is J, right? So basically what we are saying is if we have selected the previous one, then we will not select the current index at all, right? That's why we continue. 
otherwise if these two conditions are satisfied we will always want to take that house right because we want as many house as possible and then we will check whether how the houses that we have able to steal is greater than or equals to k or not or basically we are able to satisfy the first constraint or not if this is possible then we will return true because we have already satisfied all the constraint with this we are satisfying the second one and with this we are satisfying the first third one and finally the number of houses that we are able to steal if it is greater than equals to k from this we are, we are able to satisfy the first constraint as well so with this particular algorithm we will be able to say whether a particular capability x is possible or not right now the what is the time complexity of this entire algorithm a simple for loop is there so it would be order n right where n is the number of houses now the problem is not fully solved so what we have said is like we will start from one we will we will try whether one is possible or not and then we will start we will take two we'll see if two is possible or not and so on and so forth right so what is the time complexity of the entire solution now so we will you will start from one do an order n algorithm and then start and take two do an order n algorithm right so what is the maximum value that you can that it can go it can go till 10 to the power 9 because that is the maximum amount of money that a house has so the total number of value v here is 10 to the power 9 so the complexity would be v into n right and v can be 10 to the power 9 and n can be 10 to the power 5 so this will not pass right so we need something better now notice that we are doing a linear search here right so the first thing that it should come to your mind is can we apply binary search or not right so this is exactly similar to other binary search problem that we have solved in this particular channel i will link the playlist in the comment section and the i icon at the top right please watch it you will be able to understand uh, this much better or if you are seeing this kind of problem for the first time you can pick any problem from that playlist and try to solve it and you will be able to gain this particular algorithm a bit more because there are various pro practice problem that you will find in that playlist so now how to app like whether binary search is applicable or not how to uh, determine that so just to remind like let's say we have some sample space and we have to see if binary search is applicable or not so what we will do we will divide the sample space into half and if we are deterministically able to say that we will either skip the left half or skip the right half completely then we will apply binary search here so in this particular problem what we have been asked we have been said that okay let's say this is x so what we are saying is whether capability x is possible or not so if answer is yes capability x is possible then there is no no reason to try anything on the right why because we are saying capability x is possible it means capability x plus 1 and x plus 2 all of them would be possible right because if we increase capability we will be increasing number of houses that we have right like this condition would be relaxed and if we increase the number of houses that we have whatever we have selected would still be valid so basically if we if x is valid x plus 1 x plus 2 and everything would be valid so if e is possible of x is true it means we can completely skip the right half and only search in the left half in the other hand if x, if e is possible of x is false it means with x we are not able to steal k houses right so we need we need to increment x so that number of houses that we have is increased and we will see if we are able to select this k houses or not so basically if it's possible of x is false we can completely skip the left half and only try the right half right so this constraint is applicable here basically there is a function which can tell us deterministically whether to go left or right and hence binary search is applicable here so this v would be replaced by log of v right so because we will be touching log v number of points and hence the complexity would be n log v which will pass right so let's look at the code the code is exactly similar this is the binary search that we are doing right uh, we are checking if either mid is possible or not if it is possible we will search in the left half otherwise we will search in the right half 
right? And is possible function is exactly the pseudo code that we have seen. Um, we have initialized can steal and last steal indexed, right? And we are saying that if the current current value or current house has greater than max money number of dollars, we will not steal this house and it will continue. Otherwise, if this house is just the adjacent to the last steal indexed house, we will continue. And if these two conditions are not satisfied, it means we can take this particular house, the house at index J, and we will take that house and inc increment our can steal as well, right? So finally, we will get how many maximum number of house that we can steal. And if maximum number of house that we can steal is greater than equals to K, then we will return true. Otherwise, we will return false, right? So hope this solution makes sense. If you have any doubts in this problem, please post them in the conversation below. I will be happy to answer. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.